Isso aqui, oh, é um pouquinho de Brasil, ya ya. Wool is just sheep. If you have alpaca, it's camelid. If you have a goat, it's mohair or cashmere. To be wool, it's gotta be sheep, okay? So, um, oh, let me get this here. Because I prepared some stuff for you. So characteristics of wool, durability and resiliency, stretch up to 50% when wet and 30% when dry, bounces back when stress is released, it has elasticity. So again, if you get alpaca, alpaca doesn't have elasticity, silk doesn't have elasticity, but if you blend it with wool, you get elasticity. And that's one of the things that gives it resilience. It's the fact that it can go back to the regular thing. Fiber absorbency. Hygroscopic. I learned this word. <laughs> <laughs> Absorbs water and gives heat in return. So wool can absorb up to 30% of its weight in moisture without feeling them. Works as a temperature regulator. So that's why people use it in the deserts because during the day it's going to get the sweat from your body and keep a, a dry layer of air in between. So you're not going to be uh, too hot because it takes that. And in the and if it's raining, it's going to also absorb that and keep a layer of air in between. So I thought that was uh, interesting too. So felty scales and <laughs> so if you're in the desert and then you're wet, you don't want any of the cousin because you'll be felted. Only if there's a lot of ocean. There's a lot of touches. Yeah. So <laughs> what makes wool felt is the scales that they have. And I bartered, I love bartering. I love. And I bartered this at, at one show. And it was uh, merino and silk, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And then I dyed over because there was too much white. But the thing <laughs> is, uh, the problem is that it's soft, it's very soft, but it was terrible to spin. I hate spinning um, uh, super wash because it gets very slippery. My solution for it is to use a blend of that. So I'm going to use that with alpaca yeah. that I have at home, a brown alpaca. So I'm going to blend both and then it makes the spinning nicer. So, um, and what is a superwash? A superwash is because the each fiber has a lot of scales around that will grab in each other and that's what causes felting. So they take, uh, they kill those scales a little bit and the funny thing is I just figured out that the, the fiber that I got was super washed after I washed it because I dyed and I put it to dry and it was so bad. Like it was like dead there, flat, you know, no, no nothing. And I look at it and I'm like, gosh, I killed it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really bad. But that's what super wash makes. How do they, how do they, do that to that surface though. Is it a chemical that they yeah. use on it? Is it's that why they're saying that it's, it's a chemical that they put? I don't know exactly how the process is. I can definitely check better about it. But it's a chemical that they put and that takes the the chemical out of it and it's bad. Yes, me? Is this a super wash and alpaca? No. This is um, merino and silk. And because I don't like to spin it, I'm going to blend it with alpaca, and then because you're blending with a fiber, a regular fiber, then it spins easier. And I'm going to use a brown alpaca and use it to, to give the color. About what percentage alpaca, what percentage wool? They say that alpaca, if you put 10% would be enough, 10% uh, of wool would be enough to give elasticity to alpaca. What I notice is that when you are spinning alpaca, it has a tendency of fluff up the yarn. Okay, so um, if right now I'm doing a, a blend at home, 
And if you put more merino, that is what I'm doing with the alpaca, it is a little bit less so fluffed up that it's a little bit more controlled. My friend did a good uh, study on that. She put different uh, amounts of alpaca in the shawls she was making, and, and it's a very interesting um, study. So the next thing is each fiber takes dye differently, and I love this. So, you know, I did the course, so I had a lot of leftover, and I said, what am I going to do with this leftover? I'm going to put in a pot of dye, because my teacher also said that if you have the same color dye, for example, if you have a lot of uh, yarns that are, you want to reuse, if you dye them in one pot of color, even if they are the different colors, because if they have that common thing, mm -hmm. they are going to match, right? So I did dye, and there you can see the difference in the colors. I don't know what breed is what, but you can see the difference in the, in the color. The other thing that I find out now, found out, is that it dyes both in acid or basic dye stuff, wool. I thought that wool only dyed in acid. Um, and recently I was dyeing with, uh, um, instead of vinegar, I was using citric acid, and I put double the amount that I was dyeing. So I went reading and then I got this book here, one of the books that I brought, and it says exactly this, that uh, an alkaline environment, soap keeps alkaline, right, uh, is going to harm a wool fiber more than citric acid. But of course, you're going to, to look carefully on that. Um, also, many companies that do commercial tops and stuff, they use acid to, um, to destroy the vegetable matter. So if you put too much acid, it's going to, so you, but, you know. Um, so less prone to damage in acid solution. Resistance to flame. This is something that I had at school. Let me just open up a little bit here <laughs> at my glasses. And I thought it was very interesting because most of our children, I don't have children anymore, but most of our children, they, they have synthetics on them. And so I brought this. So this is wool and this is synthetic. If you look at the synthetic, and this is going to glue on your children's clothing. See, it just melts. And it keeps going, it doesn't stop. Unless you make it stop. Now, the wool. So if you want to know if a fiber is wool or if it has synthetic, it burns when it stops. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It smells like, uh, you see, it stops by itself. Yeah. And it smells like burnt hair. Yeah. So this is real fiber. So this is out. That was scary. That's why I brought the thing here. But that's, uh, I think it's an interesting point. Like our kids use a lot of synthetics and we don't know, right? Um, so resistant to flame. The other thing is differential friction effect. Isn't that nice? So what that means is that if you get a, a fiber and you do this with your fingers, it will go to the teeth of the fiber. You see, it is going to the teeth. And it doesn't matter the breed. This is a link from that one. I think it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's um, Romani. And then if you do that, to the link, yeah. and you go doing it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it keeps going to the to the teeth. You can start here if it doesn't show. 
and then it keeps going to the teeth if you keep on doing that. And it doesn't matter the breed, it can be a small one or, you know, and that's what it means to be differential friction effect. Some people, when they are combing, they say that you should comb all in one direction. So you should put the, the butts first and then um, for all of them. So if you want to, to go to that, and if you want to do that, this is a trick that you can use to know. Because some of the fiber, they don't have a distinct uh, top as they have the button. So some of them, it's harder to, to look at, like a merino. When you're, so if you do that, you will know which side it will be. Um, um, so shrink resistant wool is much less likely to peel. What does that mean? Um, there are, each breed has a level of felting, a level of shrinking. Normally long wools, normally not all of them, uh, are less prone to, to felting than a merino. Merino is the one that felts more, right? Um, so if you want something not to peel, use long wools. That's the message here, or it will do less. So, I have a few books that I brought today, and this is my first book about sheep in sheep's clothing. I think many of you might have it, right? And I do like its definition of, of fleece. And I went through it, and I tried to follow more or less this. And I have other books, but this is the one that I followed to do today. And it's per Nola and Jane Fournier and um, sheep's clothing. But I got other things that I, I so her classification was fine wool, long wool, down tight wool, other wools. And I was surprised uh, by some of the ships, and I'll tell you when I show where she put in, in her classification. Um, then another thing that I got from another book, from this one, from Kate uh, Larson, and I'll pass it to you, is that uh, measurement systems. I always was that, I always think in micron, because Brent for it, I didn't quite understand, or I didn't care to, micron was good enough for me. So there are two measurements, and I think that even that, the bread for count is, is slowly not being uh, in vogue anymore, right? People don't use it. But the bread for count is fibrous quality of spinning counted based on how many yards of worsted yarn in a pound. So because a merino is a, a thin fleece, it's going to spin more yards because it's going to spin thinner. So the Brentford count is going to be a higher number, okay? And it's based on the amount that you um, would spin in a pound of fiber. So different fleeces is going to give a different measurement. Micro count is the actual diameter of a sample of fibers. Okay, so I like my micro, micro count because it tells me it, the, the lower the micro count, the softer the fiber is. So one is opposite of the other. It's just for you to see because I use that uh, to tell about other things. So fine wool, fine, fineness of wool is measured in micro for me, right? Fine wools vary from 17 to 33 micro. You can have some merino that are lower than 17. Yeah, and I'll talk about uh, a little bit there. Normally, um, or at least they, the, the fine wools uh, are breeds that are a merino cross. And if they are not a merino cross in itself, they're gonna at least at some time have had a merino cross in it. Uh, they have many creams for each. Unfortunately, I didn't bring any the fiber itself. Um, and it felt ready. So this book that you're is going through, there is um, uh, information there. Oh, you know what? I might have here. So just one second. Let me just see here. Yeah, I have a very greasy rambouillet that is from my year two, so that's a long, long ago. 
So in your books, in that book, you have uh, a felting information like this that tells the breed and how they felt. So when they say many crimps per inch, if you look at this Brambuier very old, you see that it has a lot of, yeah, so that's what they mean by many crimps per inch. And so it felt easily. And washing, um, the book says a lot of grease, so you should use a lot of hot water, plenty of detergent in small quantities. And the small quantities is the big word for you. <laughs> and I'll show you soon why. Okay, so then she specifies a uh, bond that is in Australia, that is Merino Ewes to Lincoln Rams. That's some of the process that they do to develop one or another um, characteristic in the breed. So CVM, I, I spun a little bit of CVM in a course. I loved it. I need to buy some. <laughs> Just the name is so bad. Yeah, yeah it is very mutant. <laughs> <laughs> but it is nice. It is nice. So, and so Rome Dale, I don't have Rome Dale, but I have Rome Way. Columbia, it's all uh, called also spring fibers because spring fibers, because they have a lot of spring in them after you spin, so you spin, so it's pretty good. Columbia Cormo, I, I've been dreaming of having a Cormo fleece for a while now. <laughs> and Corydale, so Corydale, everybody knows that's what I used to, that I still have some. Um, but I also have here, um, so I have some Corydale fleece, and that I got from school, and some Flor uh, Floridale um, top. So another thing that is important to know is that even though it's Floridale, you have differences in the Floridale that is produced. Uh, the top is from Uruguay, okay? Um, the fleece is from Canada or North America. Um, depending on where, <coughs> the ship is, the same breed is going to have different characteristics because it depends on the food that they have. Like Uruguay doesn't have winters like we have here. So they have green pastures year round, so that's going to make a difference. Um, the kind of weather, if it's no, if it rains more or whatever, is going to give a difference. So even if we have a corridor from us here, to the south is going to be different. The other thing is the way they prepare the fiber makes a huge difference on, on how it answers. So Corridale, they say it's between 25 and 33 micron, and it's British long wool rams, Lincoln and English, English plaster, okay? And they are three to five inches long. So, what that means is that the staple is three to five inches long. If you pull a little bit of it, it's going to, to show you. Debouillet is uh, from USA. That's where you find. Uh, it's Merinos and Rambouillet. Poward, I love Poward. I love Poward's beauty. And the reason I love Poward's is that um, Powers has a tendency to spin thin. So when I was doing my course, I was always trying to spin thin, and I wasn't able. And then they gave me Powers. <laughs> <laughs> like, dream come true. <laughs> it's really, really nice. I love Powers. And Powers is also, um, it's from Australia. And the reason I, I, I told you about the fruit kneading uh, podcast, and there is one of the podcasts that they interviewed uh, the guy that the family has developed the powers to that region of Australia to be uh, better there. Rambouillet, aha, uh -huh. I got some Rambouillet last year. I haven't spun yet, but it's very soft. It's very nice. So now that I'm getting something, I'm separating a little bit just to be there. Target. 
I have some target that I bought here and and I spun it and everything, but the target that I got didn't feel as soft as I was hoping for. But uh, my friend got some fiber, um, blended fiber with the uh, target and silk, and she says it's pretty nice, so I have to, to try. And then Merino. So, first of all, you have the name on the top, and I wanted to see, this is a merino robe, and it is soft, but it looks not near as soft as this one. So this merino top came, I don't know if this is one that, I don't think it is the one that came from Brazil, because I have the ones that I was selling is from Brazil. Um, this one's I don't know, because I bought it at Fiber Garden. And this, uh, a friend of mine gave me, so I do think this is from Canada. But notice the difference just in the preparation. Okay? So tops tend to be uh, more. So, they're the one important thing, if you buy a, a Merino fleece, they say it's 25 to 45% of the of total of the fleece is fleece. So, if it weighs 10 kilos or 10 pounds, you really have 7.5 uh, 7 to 5.5 pounds of, of fleece, right? Yeah, that's the grease, and then there's also all the vegetation. Yeah. yeah, and to take all that grease <laughs> off, small quantities, it's I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing is Charlier is the registered name for ultra-fine merino wool, no higher than 17.5 micron. And it's in Australia that it is um, created. So that's another thing that hopefully soon will come true. I haven't spun anything like that yet. Okay? And merino has a lot of history. Um, like in, in, I think it was before Napoleon, so it probably was in the 17th, beginning of the mm -hmm. 17th hundred, right? Um, the Spanish, if, you, if somebody, the Spanish hold the control on the Marinos. And if somebody tried to take them out of the country, they would kill them. That was the penalty. Because everybody wanted the Marino and they didn't have. So the Spanish had the control. When Napoleon came and took control, then everybody had it. it spread throughout the world. But right now we have in and I, you see, for me this this is a resume of the book in one way, but it gives me lines to see what I want to test, like Rambouillet, France and USA, or Polypé, that is target uh, and dorset crosses, and Rambouillet Finchy. So this is in the USA and Canada. I can get this fiber. I can go deeper in it and, and try to study it more. So, and that's what I want to do and I, I've been trying to find information and I don't get that much. So, Marina was there. Um, then long pool. I'm falling in love with long pool. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would never do it, but it's wool. <laughs> okay, so it's most originated from the British sheep breeds. Um, it has a, a wavy cream pattern. So I did have here, um, let me see if I have in here. So you can see the difference of that. For example, with this tis water. All right, so the tis water has, you can see the difference of the cream. The cream is on wavy as they use there, right? In comparison to, to this one, right? So um, it's medium to long staple, five to 8.5 inches. I would say some are even bigger than that. 
uh, begins at 32 micron to more than 40 microns. This is what the book said, but after that you're gonna see that I think some change. Uh, it's better for outwear, upholstery, rugs and carpet, lustrous or semi-lustrous, they have a lot of luster. Um, washing, moderately greasy, easy to wash, hot water and detergent, felting low, exceptions. And that is a killer, right? Because Gotland, Borderdale, Romany, Finnish, and Lincoln. So my first fleece of Lincoln, I washed it. It was the first fleece, no, the second fleece I bought. And I washed it. And, and also, not so long ago, I bought, I bought some from Border last year. And the bottom fell. So, and it's breathing. And I have some samples here of what I washed, what I washed in big quantities. So now, I'm gonna have to wash more hot water. I think I'm going to buy some scour to, to dry it. And I'm gonna wash, dry, and spin because I didn't have so much good luck. Um, blue face plaster is my new passion. <laughs> it's my new passion. It is really nice. I so this here that I'm knitting is blue face plaster that I dyed and I'm knitting. And I think it's pretty soft. I, I really like it. And now I got 75% um, blue face plaster and 25% silk and I dyed it blue and I'm spinning. And every time I look at my husband and I say, isn't this beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> you know when you just check the twist, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And I do have, oh, and I forgot this too because they're not there. So this is the little face plaster. Sorry guys, this is within the fine. I bought South African fine. And what I think it is, is a merino that is from South Africa because it really looks like a, a merino. And the Falkland. I think it's the, it's What's the fall? I have some Falkland. Falkland is, sheep that comes from the Falkland Islands. Yes. So it doesn't have a specific breed, because I thought it was a breed, but it is sheep from the region. So I think this would be an interesting sheep to make a study about. I wouldn't mind doing the Falkland Islands. <laughs> <laughs> Get some samples for us. It's really nice. I like it very much. So sorry for that. I, I had separate here, but I forgot because they were not. There. So the border laster, I do have some of the border laster here that I bought lately and that I badly wash it. And I thought it was beautiful, and it is beautiful. Look at this color. But then this I washed a second time, not very well again. And look how greasy the yarn is. It's very greasy. So I thought because it was a long wool, it was going to be easy. And the other thing, it kind of, it didn't fail completely, like I can separate, but you see, it's a struggle. So I would have to wash maybe one by one or put on the thing and, and wash it, right? So that's the more than last year. beautiful. I'm going to use, and it's a huge fleece, and I said, I better wash this. Never again, I wash piece by piece. <laughs> um, Borderdale, Cofors, I don't have it here, but I remember the first encounter that I had with Cofors reminded me of my mother's hair. It was uh, a black and, and white hair. Um, like, it just, when I look at that, I said, my mother. So I fell in love with the sheep. Unfortunately, I, I haven't uh, got more. Um, Cotswold, I think the best fleece that I got, my husband chose it because he wanted a pullover, and it was a Merino Cotswold um, cross. And it was the best fiber I got because all the, the staples were the same. It was not as soft as a merino, but it was nice, and it was big like this, but the whole fleece, because you know, some pieces you have parts that are like this, and then it grows. This Cotswold merino cross was like this, and it was a beautiful natural brown. 
and I, I did it in brown. So, so I should try it, uh, more of this. And the Cotswold, what I also thought interesting is that it is an ancient breed that was improved with the addition of Lincoln and Luster blood. So, so that uh, for me is interesting. Guys, if you have questions, ask. I'm, and I hope it's not boring. <laughs> uh, Finnish or Finn, um, so it's from Scandinavia. Um, and it's originated from the Scandinavian short game sheet. So if you see, even though these are long, you can have 24 to 31 microns. And Gotland, so look at this Gotland yarn that I just spun. Isn't this beautiful? So I just spun some Gotland in Cheviot, and I really fell in love with it. This is the fiber. And, and that's why I say, when you buy cloth, the fiber itself tends to be softer because they are separated, and I don't know what they do, but um, <laughs> this is, is pretty amazing. I really love it. I really love it. Um, Lincoln. So this is my first Lincoln that, oh, okay. just go there so that it goes. Um, so that I tried in a lot of I think I paid a dollar for it, and it was at the, at the fiber, no, the annual thing, you know, the royal Oak, and the guy was showing me sharing, and I said, can I buy it? He said, you really want it? I said, you want it? Yeah. <laughs> so I got it. I have to go to that place, to that place again, but not on auction day because on the auction day my oh, head was just <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Okay. Uh, Martian. Gosh, I have to show you the Martian because I got some, I, I'm now not buying too much fleece, but I'm getting different fleece so that I can check it. And I got this Martian and it is not supposed to be uh, a soft fleece. Look at the staple of this thing. Can you see? So I want to see how it spins. So the Martian is supposed to be, as per the book, 29 to 34. I think it's really more. So I have to check those numbers to see. But I'm, I'm dying to spin that to see how it's going to go. Romani, most sheep growing country in the world. It's like, that means every country that grows sheep will grow Romani. And they are the cutest thing I love, right? <laughs> so now the interesting thing, again, about sheep is that Romani is not su supposed to be that soft. But I have this yarn that I brought before and I have to find a project. I have one kilo of fiber spun. And the thing with this fiber, this sheep was beautiful. It had all the colors, from black to gray to uh, beige to natural. And you can see this in this yarn. So the idea, I'm thinking now I found a solution for that because now I have yarns that are very, um, when I blended, I didn't do it with work. Um, so now I have yarns that are very, let's say, white, and then ones that are more beige, and some with the other colors. So I found a solution. I'm going to hand dye it, um, like when you hand paint the yarn, and then get staples, and then the colors will differ. And that's going to take the difference uh, away when I'm eating. Isso aqui oh, é um pouquinho de Brasil, yaya. Yeah, yeah.